one example. Um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy uh, playing characters who are just different from me, really. And I've been blessed with a lovely mum and a lovely dad. And uh, Draco had the opposite. So it's, it's just really nice to embody uh, other shoes that are worlds apart from you. So Draco and I certainly share very little um, eye colour. That's about it, I think. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun to play these characters that are uh, tortured, really, inside. And, uh, that is that is one of the great things about her writing is all the characters are, are so three dimensional. There's nobody is just the same. Uh, Brian, who do you have back there? Hey guys, I'm way back here in the cheap seats by the booth, and uh, I've got Jennifer from Jacksonville, and she's got a great question for the entire panel. Someone down there is really scared of you. Careful, Jennifer. Go Slytherin, by the way. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah! Also, I was wondering if you guys have any memorable pranks that were pulled on set. Is that for the whole panel? Memorable pranks that may have occurred on set? There were so many, it's tough to actually remember. Daniel was chief of the uh, pranking, really. Uh, for, for many years, there was the phone gag of turning your language on your phone into Turkish or Arabic or something that was impossible to... Uh, bring it back and I believe you, you had a run in with it, didn't you? Uh, well, Dan used to do it, and of course Dan was 12 or 13 or 14. I was considerably older, I should have known better. And I took his phone one day when he was in makeup, oh, and I turned it into Korean, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, and I memorized, of course, how to switch it back to English, because it wouldn't be a funny joke if you couldn't. Except that in Korean, it's not the same number in the menu item, and we had to phone the headquarters of Sony Ericsson, and it took like a day and a half, and the joke fell rather flat. And that was the last joke that I played on the set. <laughs> I used, to, I used to smuggle chocolate and sweets onto the set in the huge pockets in the side of the roads. And, uh, and at the end of the day, there'd just be a mash of crisps and melted chocolate. Uh, so much so that they sewed the pockets up, I think, on all the roads after... Uh, it wasn't really a prank, but it certainly bugged it up for the rest of us. <laughs> um, I was really boring. <laughs> Everyone's got all these great funny stories. Whenever someone says to me, what's the funniest thing happened? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like Rupert threw a dart in my foot once. What? That wasn't a prank though. It's hilarious. <laughs> I think we need some context. We need some context for this one. Well, Rupert had this like massive dressing room, bigger than mine. Um, and uh, he had a big, uh, he had this uh, dart board and we always go up there to play darts sometimes. Rupert was quite good at it. So that's how I know it was on purpose. <laughs> and um, yeah, he didn't mean to hit my foot. He meant to just do it, you know, near my foot, and it went and lodged straight in my ankle. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's not a prank, but it's kind of funny. I'm thinking back. I mean, it's on the DVD. There is a, there is a prank that, that they actually got on film because everyone was in on it except Daniel, and uh, it was the scene. Um, I think it was from Prisoner of Azkaban, where all the students were asleep in the Great yes. Hall. Uh, and there was a kind of a crane shot that came from really wide crane down to a close-up on Daniel, who we realize is awake still, and all the other students are asleep. And uh, and I walked into the room with, with Snape, I think, and, um, and Filch to kind of chat with, with Dumbledore. And uh, they had a, a, a little electronic machine with a remote button that made rude bottom noises. Oh. <laughs> and um, they <laughs> hid it inside Daniel's kind of pillow that he had on the floor and then gave the little remote button to uh, Michael Gambon and at the moment he chose he would let this noise off and uh, and it was it was wonderful because just as the camera craned down everyone's asleep it's all peaceful Daniel's there looking listening and then they let off this sound and Daniel first of all started to snigger but then the snigger spread throughout all of the kids <laughs> who were laid on the floor of the Great Hall it was fabulous yeah, it was fun. And it's actually on one of the DVDs, I think you can watch it. That's awesome. Uh, Julia, where'd you go? I'm right there she is, up right up here front. In the front. Hey. Hi guys. I have Joey from Clearwater, Florida. Hey, Joey. What's up, Joey? Hey, Tom Felton. What up, my Joey? Friend, my friend is like really a big fan of Slytherin, and he is like really a big fan of Slytherin and everything. He's really a big fan of your house. Well, thank him, man. He's clearly got good taste. Okay. Since your enemies in the film are 
are you friends uh, with Matthew outside of the film? Absolutely What is your... We <laughs> are either ends for a reason. The yeah, mate. I can't look him in the eye directly without having... I've got to sit between them. He does. They all kick off. <laughs> he knows why. <laughs> you want to go? No. Do no. Go. <laughs> I dare not. He kicked my ass. That's not too bad. Yes, we are lucky enough to be very good friends outside. We let the Slytherin Gryffindor beef subside for when we're in the Muggle Kingdom. It's okay. Oh Thank you. Thank you, mate. No, it's a great question. Oh, Gryffindor, Thanks. Matthew. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Yes. All right, buddy. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right, Aaron, where did you go? Hello. Who do you have with you? Gentlemen, I have Courtney. Courtney is local, and she has a...